Buonasera a tutti gli amici di Karateka.it, sono Alessio Sorrentino e siamo tornati live con la 46esima puntata delle Karate Talks. Stasera con noi un ospite molto speciale dall'altra parte dell'oceano, perché Karateka è sempre più internazionale, che è Cucito Zaki, che però eh, farò parlare tra un minuto. Come sapete, eh, lascio sempre questo primo minuto per me e poi... Eh, tutto ovviamente su, sull'ospite. L'intervista sarà in italiano e in inglese, quindi non preoccupatevi, anzi scrivetemi le domande nei commenti così io le posso eh, tradurre, insomma proviamo, cercherò di fare il mio meglio per eh, tradurre anche quelle che saranno le risposte di eh, Gakuchi. Eh, vi ricordo sempre le buone maniere, oh esatto, vedo già un bel like, ma siamo in 5 collegate, quindi io vorrei 5 like, 5 condivisioni. Eh, e cinque commenti salutateci eh, salutateci appunto eh, per, questa, per questa live il mio minuto è scaduto eh, quindi questa volta in inglese diciamo hi Gakuchi and thank you for joining us how are you? hi, uh, hi I, I hope everyone's doing great my name is Gakko Jitsuzaki I'm from Team USA I'm ranked fourth in the world currently for Kata Um, it's a pleasure uh, to be on here and um, be able to talk to you, Alessio. So thanks for inviting Thank me. Thank you. Thank you. So, quindi si è introdotto un attimo, ha detto ovviamente per i pochi che non conoscessero qualcosa su di lui, è quarto al mondo nel ranking VKF e fa parte ovviamente del eh, team statunitense. Ma iniziamo con la domanda di Rito, quindi dici qualcosa che non sai, eh, che i più non sanno di Gakuchi Sozaki. So, As uh, I told you before, uh, we have a ritual question that uh, we usually ask at the beginning to every guest of Tar- Karate Talks, which is, uh, tell everybody something that maybe is not well known about uh, Gakuchi Tozaki. Nice. Um, aside from Karate, um, I studied a lot. So as an elite competitor, um, I always uh, try to study as well to balance both education and being an yeah. elite level athlete. So um, I'm actually a doctor. Um, oh. I have a degree in doctorate of physical therapy. So mm-hmm. um, I, I'm a licensed physical therapist. So I would like to, you know, eventually uh, treat patients, uh, treat athletes, um, preferably karate, right? Preferably karate yeah, athletes yeah, for sure. who travel internationally, who compete at the elite caliber level um, so that they can perform at their best. So that's one thing that people don't really know about me. Um, okay. I love watching movies. I love to travel. I love going outside, going hiking. And um, I recently went scuba diving. And that was okay. very, very, very fun. <laughs> first time. First time. First time. Yeah, it was really fun. <laughs> allora, ha detto che eh, una cosa che i più magari non sanno è che lui ha cercato, pur competendo ad alto livello, sempre di studiare tanto, ehm, fino a diventare un dottore in fisioterapia. Ha uh, detto la, la cosa che mi piacerebbe di più ovviamente è quella di trattare atleti di karate però più in generale uh, potrei dire un po' più liberamente cioè un medicina dello sport fisioterapia in, uh, in generale riesce ad andare fuori guardare mh, mh, film uh, e andare a fare hiking quindi passeggiate magari un po' uh, per, uh, per vie un po' meno battute e soprattutto ha detto che ha fatto Scuba Diving, che è uh, l'immersione eh, da, da, da poco ed è stata un'esperienza molto molto bella. Um, la prima domanda che gli faccio relativa al karate la prendo da Instagram. Se ci avete seguito avevamo lasciato il box per le domande ed è eh, una domanda molto particolare perché ci hanno chiesto cosa farebbe Gakuchi se durante una competizione trovasse un tatami eh, molto molto scivoloso. So, Uh, the first question about karate is, uh, I would say, a tricky one uh, because uh, on Instagram, a uh, karateka follower uh, asked, uh, what would uh, uh, Gakuchi Tozaki do if during um, a championship he would find a slippery tatami? So mm-hmm. how could you handle it? So um, I, So this is actually a pretty common thing. I think, I don't know if... Um, It's, it's kind of hard to like understand if, you're, if you don't compete on that mat itself. Um, it's pretty common in WKF um, that sometimes the mats are pretty slippery. Um, that is because uh, it's not because of the mats. It's, um, it, it comes in a coated material um, to avoid infections and all that stuff. So it's, it's there for our safety. But yeah. um, brand new mats tend to be a little bit slippery because people don't step on it. So 
um, people have to break it in in order for it to have a little bit more traction. Mm -hmm. So I've had this history of um, kind of researching for a non-slippery like foot. Um, that is because um, I tend to sweat a lot too, and I sweat a lot. And obviously, okay. from the base of my foot, I sweat a lot too. So obviously, sweating from the bottom of my foot and competing on the mat um that causes slippery um like I, when i do kata i tend to slip a little bit so um i've researched a little bit and um one thing that caught my attention was i was watching gymnastics um i think it was like 2012 london olympics or um rio or one of those two um i was re i was watching that and then um i saw some gymnastics athlete put um powder and um some mixture of like honey some non-slippery like sticky material yep. i think it was for i don't know if it was for bars or i don't know if it was for the pommel horse or some some event they put stuff on their hands so that they don't slip right the same and, the same the same when you climb maybe the same maybe, when yeah. climbers so, use it a lot obviously. yeah so <laughs> yeah Obviously, because if you slip, right? You fall <laughs> if, if you fell from a mountain, maybe it's not the best situation yeah, of your yeah, life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I've actually tried making a, I don't want to say like a formula, but um, some like mixture of like different products so that it causes this like slipperiness, like tacky feet kind of thing. Um, but for me, what works the best is um, the liquid chalk for weightlifting. So a lot of weightlifters put chalk on their hands so that the bar doesn't slip out of their, their hands. And yeah. um, I'm pretty sure a lot of comp a lot of competitors have seen where athletes put stuff on their feet and then they walk out. Um, that's I do the same thing too. I put chalk on my feet. So what, th what that does is um, putting chalk on the feet absorbs the sweat so yeah. that um, it keeps the foot dry. So I try to put it at least two or three times before I go up um one as a routine to kind of it gives me time to kind of focus for that yeah. for the competition and plus it kind of prevents slippery so um prevents slipping so um yeah I, I think um putting that on maybe twice two three times um uh, before going up might help um or two just um always sweat all the time practice <laughs> hard so that um, you're constantly slipping and you kind of get used to that slipping. So it's yeah, one you, you, ba you, you balance on the slippery, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's one or the other. You you practice in a slippery environment so that anything slippery doesn't slip you, or yeah, yeah. two, you prevent your feet from slipping. So um, I I try to do both. I I sweat a lot usually, so this mat tends to get really slippery. And two, I put stuff on my feet so that it kind of prevents me from slipping during competition. So okay, great, great. Quindi lui dice. Eh, per prevenire, innanzitutto eh, durante le competizioni VKF è diciamo, un qualcosa che succede abbastanza spesso sia per, perché i tatami eh, sono nuovi e possono tendere anche per questioni di sicurezza insomma cercano di, di cambiarli spesso e questo porta al fatto che se non sono utilizzati eh, si tende a scivolare, a scivolare molto allora per prevenire questo lui ha detto mh, ha visto durante le Olimpiadi del 2012, eh, che diversi atleti eh, si mettevano eh, sulle mani e sui piedi, dipende dalla, dalla disciplina. Eh, una mh, mixer, una, eh, eh, non è una miscela, ma un, un composto eh, di polveri, eh, mi sembra vi detto addirittura anche eh, miele, ma qualcosa insomma che rendesse più appiccicosi gli arti. Eh, lui ha detto all'inizio ho provato anch'io a creare... Eh, questo composto eh, ma poi ho visto che la cosa che funziona di più è il magnesio che viene messo nelle mani eh, dai sollevatori di pesi eh, ed è la cosa in assoluto che, che funziona di più quindi se voi all'ascolto avete eh, problemi di, di scivolare sul tatami per fare sia kata che comité questo potrebbe essere eh, un ottimo eh, consiglio da portare a casa anche perché ha detto è diventata nel frattempo anche una sua routine. Quindi quando, prima di iniziare una gara, per concentrarsi, per entrare in modalità tatami, eh, utilizza eh, questa polvere per eh, essere sicuro di non scivolare, perché dice, io tra l'altro eh, sudo molto, soffro di, di, di grossa sudorazione, quindi è importante, è una cosa che in realtà a me succede 
eh, molto molto spesso eh, per finire eh, dice l'alternativa è eh, allenarsi in costante eh, situazione di eh, su tutami costantemente scivolosi così ti abitui a bilanciarti eh, su, su, un ambiente, su un ambiente scivoloso uh, ok um, la prossima domanda che è sempre da Instagram magari è un pochino più facile è uh, qual è il suo uh, kata uh, preferito e perché uh, so the next question comes uh, from uh, Instagram too uh, is about your preference about kata so which is your actually uh, best kata which means the one you enjoy the most not the one you perform the best Mm-hmm. Uh, so do, are you asking for like the oh so the the best kata the, that I perform it no the, the best the, the one that you enjoy the most while performing not, not the oh. best you, you, you perform maybe you can ask actually you can tell us both which is the best that, like you feel you are the stronger playing that doing that kata and the other one the, the one that you like the most okay um, well I feel confident in competing in all of them so okay. uh, yeah I mean So nowadays kata you you can't repeat your kata right so um it's like what order you put your cards down to to go against which opponent right yeah. um but i mean i i can compete in any kata any round you know okay. so um that's that's for me the answer is like i mean i don't really have a best kata cuz i like competing in all of them but mm-hmm. um My favorite kata, my favorite kata is probably um, Chatanera Kushanku, so Chatanera. Chatanera, um, okay. I have like three, so... <laughs> okay, you can tell them all. Yeah, uh, yeah. We, we won't exclude any kata, it's okay, fine. So, tell us all, all the three. Yeah, I like Chatanera Kushanku, I like Kyan no Chinto. Kyan no Chinto is a Shorin Ryu kata. Um, mm-hmm. it's, it's a very difficult kata <laughs> so um, i like performing in that and i also like to practice sanjin also so oh, sanjin is okay. a, a good kata that i always do to practice uh, my breathing techniques so um, those are my favorites um la, la domanda è stata un po' modificata che è diventata eh, quali sono i tuoi kata eh, preferiti quello dove ti senti più sicuro nel competere e quello che ti piace di più e lui mi ha risposto a livello di competizione mi sento sicuro eh, a competere con tutti i kata che portiamo anche perché adesso eh, è più una questione di scegliere il kata in base all'avversario dato che li puoi ripetere eh, mentre per quanto riguarda il suo kata preferito eh, me ne date addirittura tre che se non sbaglio se non ricordo male sono Chatanayara questo l'avete capito anche senza eh, traduzione Cinto e Uh, which was the third kata? San, San, uh, Sanchin. 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 Okay. Yeah. Uh, Sanchin. Uh, l'ultimo, tra l'altro, lo utilizza molto per i suoi esercizi di respirazione. Quindi questo è, un altro, uh, è un'altra cosa che uh, ci portiamo sicuramente a casa. Talking about uh, your preparation to uh, competition. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I, I tell it in Italian first. Um, vi voglio chiedere... Eh, parlando della sua preparazione, siccome abbiamo visto che tanti dei nostri atleti eh, fanno ricorso a eh, un piano alimentare, eh, uno, uno psicologo, eh, un personal trainer, quindi tutto, tutto lo staff eh, dietro, dietro alla preparazione, eh, mi piacerebbe sapere se dall'altra parte eh, del mondo funziona lo stesso, quindi se anche lui viene seguito, cosa fa, cosa non fa. Ovviamente vi incito sempre a lasciare le domande nei commenti, stasera magari sono un pochino più faraginoso perché ovviamente eh, tradurre all'impronta non è il mio mestiere, è una cosa un po' complessa, ma insomma ce la stiamo, ce la stiamo cavando. So, talking about um, the preparation uh, for a championship, yeah. uh, we always talk with uh, our Italian athletes uh, about the stuff that uh, they are surrounded by. Uh, for example, they have mental coaches, uh, they have personal trainers, uh, uh, they have a nutritional plan uh, for the food. And um, it would be amazing for us uh, if you can uh, give us uh, some uh, sneak peek, uh, <laughs> uh, some spoiler <laughs> about yeah. your preparation. So if you have uh, a staff around you, if you have a mental coach and so on. Okay. Um, I have a coach in Japan that I usually talk to. 
um, quite frequently. Um, not just karate stuff in general. Just he's a he's like my dad, right? So I call him here and there, and then that um, we talk about karate stuff, but we don't talk about karate stuff all the time. So yeah. it's it's always fun to always talk to him. So that kind of um, relaxes my um, uh, like nerves and all all that stuff, you know. Like, and we we obviously talk about karate stuff too. So he gives me ideas of maybe oh you can do this, maybe you can do that. Um, I take classes with them here and there, so um, he always supports me all the time. Um, my family always supports me mentally, nutrition wise, all the time. So I don't have like a specific nutrition coach or okay. uh, like a psychologist or and I don't have any of those mm-hmm. um but I always give myself time for myself so um for me I personally I mean I'm not I'm not the youngest guy anymore you know what I mean so I I personally cherish that resting days more than my training days so okay. um my 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 resting day is just as valuable to me so um, I always try to take time off to relax and just just take just think about other stuff other than karate, right? So whether that is I don't know like going outside and have a walk, go jogging, yeah. um, I don't know watch watch movies, anime, blah blah blah. Inter- interview with karateka. Yeah, 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 right. Like just take time <laughs> off to kind of relax my body, but still kind of think about karate here and there, you know, just just yeah. to like rest my body and things like that. But um, as for like preparation of like performance and stuff, I keep a log. I make a calendar. I can I can show you like a s- very sneak peek. I don't want to show like everything, but no, yeah, so um, yeah, of like the things that I do. Um, so like, I make like a calendar, like a log. I don't know if I can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we see it. We see it. Like, yeah, like I had I record like all the trainings. Sorry, it's like blurry wow. and white and stuff, but no, but um, we can understand them. Yeah. You actually make a, a Gantt project of uh, of your trainings. Exactly. So I, I list the things that I want to do and I follow through with that. So um I don't make excuses with myself. So I make a calendar, make a log, and then I ex- execute it every week. So um it's not like um I think on the spot, you know. I mean, like I, I make sure I plan it out first and then I do it. And then The next week, if it was too much, I can kind of regress it. I can progress it, things like that. But I'm always smart with um, how to approach the training days all the time so that so that it's not overwork for me and I don't get too fatigued from the training. So um, I actually, I know my body the most. So I plan those stuff by myself. And then all the other things, whether that's techniques and things like that, I ask my coach, my kata coach in uh, Japan, and um, I have a coach here. So I, I asked them, and um, so that's how I actually like, prepare for tournaments. So um, it's not – I don't have specific professionals that are always with me, okay. but um, I feel like I know my body well enough to kind of adjust and, you know, do everything myself. So. Okay, cool. Um, parto un attimo dall'inizio perché ha detto una cosa molto bella che parte da tutto sostanzialmente dalla consapevolezza che è lui di se stesso. Inizialmente ha detto – Uh, non ho, facciamo così faccio una traduzione un po' libera perché altrimenti non riesco ad andare in fila uh, non ha uno staff che lo segue quindi non ha qualcuno uh, di verticale mental coach uh, nutrizionista eccetera ma ha alcune figure di riferimento una delle quali è appunto suo padre uh, con cui oltre ad allenarsi fa anche ovviamente parla anche d'altro dice la mia famiglia mi sta molto accanto mi supporta su ogni, su ogni punto di vista e, e eh, ha un maestro ovviamente negli Stati Uniti e uno eh, in Giappone con cui, si sente, con cui si sente spesso e fa training però eh, l- l- si pianifica da solo eh, la sua attività dicendo non essendo più alle, alle prime armi conosco molto bene il mio corpo conosco eh, me stesso meglio di chiunque altro e quindi innanzitutto eh, dà importanza ai giorni di riposo tanto quanto un giorno di allenamento e questo è abbastanza raro sentirlo dare questo valore al, al riposo mi ha colpito sinceramente non so cosa ne pensate se ne vogliamo discutere nei commenti ovviamente liberi di scrivere eh, anzi mi farebbe molto piacere e eh, un'altra, un'altra cosa interessante è quando ha fatto vedere il, il telefono è che 
tiene traccia di tutti i suoi allenamenti, di tutte le sue routine, di tutte le, le sue abitudini, soprattutto eh, per capire settimana dopo settimana eh, se è l'allenamento giusto. Quindi dice, io non mi do scuse, eh, uh, stick with the plan, right? Uh, so you try also, always to uh, stick with the plan, e, e stare sul, sul pezzo, stare sul piano, rispettare il piano, e eh, in base a poi quello che sente, quindi se si sente troppo affaticato, troppo poco, eccetera, allora aumenta o diminuisce eh, il, il carico di lavoro. Eh, ok, eh, siamo giunti alla fine dei nostri 20 minuti canonici, ma visto che ne ho presi un pochino con la traduzione, vorrei fare le ultime due domande. So, I have uh, two more questions for you, if it's okay. We already hit the 20 minutes, but uh, we can do maybe a couple more. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. You're doing okay, amazing, thank... by the way. All, all that translation. <laughs> oh, great. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I, I said that I need to think about it a bit. Uh, so I, I'm trying, but... You're amazing. Uh, thank, you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And, okay, the, the first question is about your future plans. Uh, I know some, uh, some championship that you're going to join, but uh, I would like to tell us which are your goals for, uh, for this year and the next competition that uh, we can follow you. Okay. Um, so next month I have the world games coming up. That's probably the biggest competition I'll ever compete in. So, um, that it's going to be very exciting. It's in the United States too. So, um, it'll be great to represent United States in United States, um, yeah. against the best com competitors from all over the world. Right. And then I get to see other sports too. So that'll be an amazing experience. So, uh, my focus is on that as of right now. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to, um, compete in all the other premier leagues also so one is in baku and another one is uh somewhere else i'm probably we're, they're kind of rescheduled the last premier league somewhere but um i'm really excited to compete in those places too especially i mean baku i've never been in baku azerbaijan before um yeah it'll be it'll be a great experience um gaku is going to be in baku right it's fine <laughs> and then <laughs> um i see well um my fo uh, what i try to do is i don't try to shoot my goals too far i don't like okay. to you know force myself put pressure on myself to you know keep going for a very 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 long time um i i go i focus on the next tournament always focus on the next one focus on the next one and in between i just rest rest and then <laughs> practice here and there you know so um right. that's how i approach the my, that's how i build my goals i guess so um my sole focus right now long story short is to focus on competing well at the world games medal at the world games and uh possibly the two other pr two premier leagues also so i'm excited for that okay uh so um uh, quindi <laughs> now, now i was translating your english in english yeah, uh, yeah. it wouldn't be helpful <laughs> it would have been helpful um okay um dice i miei obiettivi per il 2000 per il 2022 Uh, sono ovviamente uh, quello di uh, The War Games uh, che saranno negli Stati Uniti e quindi uh, competere uh, rappresentando gli Stati Uniti uh, negli Stati Uniti uh, è una cosa che uh, lo emoziona molto e dice è probabilmente uh, la, la gara più importante che abbia, che abbia mai fatto e sarà un'esperienza molto bella perché vedrò anche altri sport uh, e quindi sicuramente prima ci sono e War Games e, e poi ehm, parteciperà alla Premier League di, di Baku eh, dove non è mai stato e quindi eh, è anche molto contento di vedere un'altra un città ov ovviamente e, ehm, però dice io non, ehm, cerco di non mettere eh, gli obiettivi troppo, troppo lontano quindi si eh, focalizza sempre su in, in pratica sulla prossima, sulla prossima gara, ma è inteso come per me l'obiettivo è la gara successiva, quindi magari adesso che eh, vuole competere sia a Baku sia a uh, War Games, prima ci sono i War Games, il mio focus è uh, su War Games e poi eh, ripianifica l'allenamento la, eh, per, eh, per passare alla, alla, gara, alla, gara poi, alla gara poi successiva. Uh, Lego, I just read a comment and translate that for you. Uh, it's gonna take a bit time, but uh, we are um, okay. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, uh, okay. Um, Christy, which is actually a staff member of Karateka.it and that helped me a lot with you, is the girl that uh, was chatting uh, with you on, a, on in the Instagram to arrange uh, the, whole, uh, the whole interview. So thank you, Christy. Uh, is telling you that uh, she agrees with you about the fact that uh, sometimes you have to take time for yourself, uh, not thinking about karate, because uh, she says uh, if you do that, also during your resting time, uh, karate is going to become an obsession and uh, is, is going to uh, make you the opposite reaction that you would like to have uh, on the tatami, because uh, obviously, if it becomes an obsession, it's something that uh, you feel great while practicing, you know? And so she yeah. says that uh, it's a great advice, you say, to, to take the time for yourself because every athlete maybe, maybe thinks uh, more I train, more uh, I become better and I can compete better. But yeah. if you don't have a nice rest, this is not going to happen. Okay. Cool. Uh, my last question uh, is not about karate. Is uh, when are you gonna visit Italy? If you ever been in Italy, obviously. I I love Italian food. I like to eat as well. Um, I'm not the biggest guy, but um, <laughs> I love to eat. <laughs> so okay, um, okay. Especially especially pasta and pizza. So those oh, two wow. are Italian food, right? So yes. I think um, I. It's, it's we we train days. we train a lot about the past and pizza. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> With no rest. <laughs> yeah, so like two of my favorite food is Italian food. So I know there's like a big connection that I have with it, Italy. Um, I've never been to Italy before, so I really want to go. Um, I heard the scenery is great. Um, I I watch. Um, I don't know if you know. Um, there's an anime called JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Yeah, 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 jo yeah. yeah. Bizarre, JoJo's, JoJo's Adventure. Oh, yeah, yeah, Joseph is our adventure. Their um, their scenery kind of looks like Italian scenery too. So um, watching those anime makes me want to go to like Europe and stuff too. So uh, I it's one uh, of the karate called like uh, Gio Giorno Giovanna. Yeah, uh, Giorno Giovanna. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, he, he's he's so cool. Um, but yeah, my my one of my dreams to go to Italy. Um, to just you know kind of enjoy the scenery, you know, like um. Uh, that's my, my that's my goal actually in the future to go okay. to all these countries that I've been to for karate competitions, not for competitions, okay. just, just to go sightsee. You know, like I want to enjoy yes. the place, right? So, um, but yeah, I, I really want to go to Italy. Um, I don't know, maybe maybe next year. Hopefully, when they have like some some sort of Premier League or something, I get to go visit or something. That, that's fine. We will organize a Karateka Premier League so you can join us for the Premier League there and. Stay as well, and we will bring you around for a food tour, okay? Yes, 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 thank you. <laughs> deal, deal. Um, eh, io ho chiesto quando, come ultima domanda, eh, quando verrà in Italia, se non c'è mai stato, mi ha detto non c'è mai stato, gli piacerebbe molto perché è molto connesso con noi dalla pasta e dalla pizza, gli piacciono tantissimo, e quindi eh, in un prossimo futuro sperebbe di venire, magari non solo per competere, ma anche appunto per stare... Eh, un po' di giorni in giro a mangiare, a vedere il nostro, il nostro paese, ovviamente io l'ho invitato e gli ho detto, boh, magari facciamo una Premier League come Karateka, eh, vieni, a, vieni a competere e dopo resti con noi e ti portiamo a giro. Eh, quindi, um, the really, really last question that uh, I uh, just said uh, in the, the comments, Claudia uh, is asking you if there is uh, any other advice uh, you would like to uh, practitioners to any uh, to the karateka here in Italy for their practice. Um, for I think for kata, um, it's harder. So there's kata and kumite, right? In karate, yeah. Um, in kumite, it's very easy for someone to look at and see like what they're actually going to do in karate. Like you hit and you actually kick people, right? So it's very easy to see what's going on. But whereas where someone who doesn't know karate, if they watch kata, they don't know what you're doing. So I think the ultimate goal for a kata athlete is to be able to perform a kata and then do it as if you are fighting someone. So if the person that's that's watching you perform, um, they should be able to see your opponent, They're the invisible opponent that you're hitting, the invisible opponent that you're kicking, striking, blocking, things like that. Um, I feel like that's your that's the ultimate goal for a kata practitioner to be able to um, express throughout their performance right so um, 
in order to level up your performance, I feel like you have to really be able to dissect your kata, um, be able to understand what each and every single technique is doing, what each and every sequence is doing, um, why the katas, you know, th th you should be able to question every single part of a kata and be able to answer it well enough so that when you do a perform your kata, it's, it has more meaning to it. So um, for any advice to any kata practitioner, I would um, tell them to really work on the application of the kata to, the, to make sure the kata is alive. It's not just movements. Yeah. And then, do you practice bunkai for this? Or you think that it could be useful to practice bunkai with other kara, uh, karateka as well? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, I think bunkai is an, an awesome like component of kata. So um, and I think kata, yes, it's good to be able to practice with a partner. But the cool thing about kata is you can imagine a opponent and then actually do it right. So um. In, during my performance, um, I'm actually blocking and hitting someone. Like, I imagine someone attacking me, and then I block, you know? Like, um, that's I see an invisible opponent, and I'm blocking him all the time. So um, it's not like I'm just doing movements. I'm actually blocking in an invisible attack. So that's what okay. I try to think in my head. So um, the more imagination that you have, um, the better you are, I think. So um, cool. see, like, these kind of things are what... I try to work on when I'm not actually performing, like not not performing, but like practicing physically. I try to practice mentally um, as well, so that it kind of works my imagination. So that okay. when I do actually practice my katas in my in, when I actually move and practice my katas, my application that I worked in my head becomes a movement. You know, so um, okay. I, that's like one like really important aspect of kata that I think everyone should practice. I, I think they should really think of what the movement is actually portraying throughout the throughout the kata so super cool okay yeah. so uh, claudia probabilmente avrai avrai inteso visto che eh, master chi in inglese ma eh, più in generale eh, lui dice un consiglio che dà a tutti i praticanti di eh, di karate ma di karate in particolare eh, è un po' più facile a suo avviso capire anche l'impatto delle tue attività quando fai come te perché avendo un avversario e andando a colpire eh, riesce a capire meglio l'efficacia della tecnica eh, subito eh, per rendere ha ah, detto una cosa molto bella ha detto per rendere il kata vivo è importante immaginarsi sempre di non star praticando eh, una, una formula fine a se stessa ma un vero e proprio combattimento eh, e quindi ah, andare a spacchettare ogni singola tecnica eh, ogni singola tecnica eh, del, del kata capire eh, come viene applicata e eh, pensarla proprio appunto come se avessimo qualcuno davanti che ad esempio stiamo afferrando, stiamo parando, stiamo attaccando e, e, questo, e questo è importante. Eh, ovviamente in questo il Bunkai può aiutare molto eh, ed è parte per lui integrante eh, di una pratica di Kata. E infine un altro consiglio che dà è quando anche non state praticando il Kata eh, di ripassarlo mentalmente ma mh, non ripassare lo schema mentale quanto piuttosto cercare di interiorizzare l'applicazione di tutte le tecniche perché dice più lo pensi anche a riposo l'applicazione più quando poi lo fai eh, ti ricordi quello e quindi lo applichi come se fosse come se fosse un vero combattimento eh, per stasera abbiamo fatto veramente tanto, siamo andati eh, oltre, ma sono molto contento e ora ringrazierò anche Kakuchi per questi dieci minuti extra. Eh, Claudia, eh, Claudia says that uh, she's, gonna try, she's gonna try to do it and uh, she's thanking you uh, for uh, your advices. I also thank you for the extra time for this interview, because oh, we have... It's half an hour, actually, it seems to me like five minutes, but I... <laughs> okay, okay, it was quick. <laughs> it, was, it was quick, and I think also very useful for everyone that uh, from, home, from home uh, is uh, watching us. So, very thank you, Gakuchi, uh, for your time uh, and for your sharing with us. Uh, I hope to see you next time uh, in Italy or maybe in California as well. It could be <laughs> a good thing for... Uh, uh, for me to be in California, oh, yeah, you can come to California. And, uh, <laughs> so um, 
see you next time uh, and uh, uh, let's see uh, bye to everyone from home so, ciao uh, grazie per uh, averci seguito e ci vediamo uh, see you uh, in una prossima karate talk in the next karate talk bye